you so much, Tally, and Beth, and Meredith, and Trini, and Megan, everybody at the gallery who's been so great, and thank you all for coming. I'm just going to keep this very brief, just to give you a little bit of insight into the origins of this body of work. Can everybody hear me? Yes. yes. Yep. So um, it all has to do with the Mississippi River, and it started with uh, a, a, some beautiful maps that I came across. <coughs> that were made by a geologist named Harold Fisk, whose life's work was to, was to map the ancient courses of the Mississippi River. And the Mississippi has historically changed and changed and changed its course um, uh, over time as it flooded and the waters receded and so on and so forth. So Fisk was able to study this and, and create these amazing maps that had each uh, path of the river over time in a different color, so they looked like these intertwining ribbons, and I was just immediately captivated by their beauty. But also the meaning, the idea of a river leaving its traces over the landscape, kind of like its own memory. Um, so time, place, uh, geological time, and that's where it started, and as I got more into the work, uh, more involved with it, um, I started bringing in my own personal history and had a little bit to do with a transition in my life, um, which was that my twins, Zach and Zelda, are here tonight. Uh, we're getting ready to go off to college, and that's a big transition. That was like my biggest project ever, you know, the 18-year project of getting your kids off <laughs> into the world. And it just um, uh, elicited a kind of retrospective period in my, in my work, and so uh, I was a little bit reticent. Several people have remarked, gee, your work's really changed. I was reticent to, to let the work change in that way, to let it become more personal, to, to uh, let these, you know, these mementos and artifacts uh, that, that were from my own personal history and biography, autobiography, come into the work. But I just had to do it. It just needed to be, needed to happen. So I just went with it. <laughs> and, and then uh, as, the, as the work continued, um, and I, I did more actual research, it became more, uh, less sort of autobiographical and more historical. So I was reading a lot about the history of the Mississippi River. And all of that stuff was in my mind. And then when I was in the studio working, it just kind of all came out in various ways, not literal ways, but, um, but it's, there are many, many ideas and, and, and references and things that I read and, and thought about and things that I had, had saved and gathered over the years. Um, I just want to mention, that these large pieces all have specific sections of the Mississippi River from the Fisk maps. So um, the, the most prominent line in each one would be the, the current course of the, of the river in the 1940s when Fisk's maps were published. It hasn't changed much since then. Now the river is very engineered and controlled. Um, so so he, Fisk's mapped from Cairo, Illinois, Cairo, sorry, Cairo, to Donisonville, Louisiana, where my grandmother was born, turned out. Um, so, and, and there are 15 sections. So these are, the, in this show, you have six of the sections represented. Um, and sometimes the titles are taken from place names in those sections. Uh, the piece over there is um, Northern Lights, Dismal Swamp. And <laughs> I couldn't resist Dismal Swamp, that just really. Uh, tickled me, so that entered into my thinking about how that piece was made. Um, and uh, I should have said, I meant to say, if you have any questions, um, please feel free, free to ask me. I'll, I'll just continue, but um, feel free to interrupt. So uh, just a couple of the personal things I want to point out. Um, these pieces over here uh, have recipe cards that were my mother's. Um, that's about as personal as it gets, and I lost her when I was 11 years old. So I've had those, they've treasured, treasured those, and was hesitant to actually use them in this way, but again, I felt like I had to do it. Um, the, the patterns of toile de jouy um, that you see in many of the works, that comes from my memories of my grandmother's house in New Orleans, and she had toile curtains, and I, I just remember just becoming engrossed in those pastoral landscapes that had no horizon, no beginning, no end, and just continued endlessly um, uh, in her home. So that's another very personal memory. So, so these are about place, 
about, about different time scales, the personal, the geological, the historical. They're about memory, time. Rivers are the great metaphors of time. Um, I think that's, that's my synopsis, yes. <laughs> Process, yes. Um, so they start with watercolor, and I project a section of the Fisk map and, uh, and mask it out with a masking fluid, and then start layering on watercolor, um, letting that dry see how it looked, and then respond. So it's a very additive, responsive process. I, can't, I, know, I do not know what they're going to look like when I start. I have no idea. So there's an, there's an element of, of spontaneity, intuition, trust, um, foolhardiness, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, and, and, and so it's just a responding, what do I need to do formally? And so working out the formal, through working out the formal dilemmas, the content emerges. It's, it's kind of a funny thing. I mean, I don't, s s I know I, all this stuff is in my head and heart, and it just comes out through this battle with form. So you, you kind of start, do you start with an idea of what it's going to be, or you just kind of start with a blank slate and it becomes whatever? Well, I know it's going to be this section of the river. Okay, so this is a section. These are all specific sections, and and, um, and some of them, for example, with with the one behind you, the dismal swamp. I, I that sort of determined the feeling of the piece. I wanted it to have that sort of gloomy quality, and uh, so that may inform a color decision. Yeah, but often they'll, you know, I think Brock was the artist who said. The, the art in a work of art lies in the struggle between what you want it to be and what it wants to be. And, and I'm a firm believer in that. You know, I feel like you start off on a path, but you have to be responding to what's happening in the piece. And that's where, uh, where you know, that's the beauty of it and, and the surprise and the invention and the magic of it for me. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you very much. Thank you.